everybody, it's Dr. Hammerstedt from Holist. Welcome to a Wednesday, Wellness Wednesday. Uh, let's talk a little bit about carbs today. So carbs were good, then they were bad. Now they're good, now they're bad. By simplifying this all, this nutrition and our weight, we're missing the point. Folks like to argue about all of this, but they're missing the point because the point is complicated and you can't simplify it. So let's talk about what we know. Let's ignore the 10% that people like to fight about in the media. Let's talk about balance and real food and how to get you to weight wellness, sleeping better, feeling better by making the right choices. And today we're gonna to talk about what that is with carbs. So if you like this, share it and get in touch to hear about our next coaching program where you'll get this type of daily uh, information daily to you and personalized coaching for you for me. So today, let's first talk about the glycemic index. We hear about this all the time. The glycemic index, unfortunately, is not as simple as it sounds, like nothing else is. The glycemic index is basically a relative ranking of carbohydrates and the types of foods according to how they affect the blood glucose levels, but not how they affect the rest of your body. So basically combine all of which is in each food and then see what the area under the curve is and then call it an index. So carbs, remember, are tons of sugar molecules that are kind of linked together um, by different linkers. And so the length and the type of the linker is gonna determine kind of how you break it down um, and how it affects your body and it gets broken down in different speeds depending on what they're made of. So carbohydrate laden foods with a low glycemic index raise your glucose levels less highly and cause basically lower and slower rise of blood glucose, although that's very simplified. Um, so, and also that is usually correlated with the, um, the rise or the lack of the rise of the insulin associated with that, which as you'll hear about in our coaching program is really the key to obesity. So the low to no sugar, the low to no grain and flour and the veggies grown above ground are less starchy and this is real food. So when people are talking about, you know, what foods you should be choosing, I always say, if it's a real food, eat it, okay? So refining a carb, such as purifying or concentrating it, will increase the glycemic index. Removal of the fat and fiber and protein in the food in the refining process means that the carbs can be digested and absorbed more quickly, and the glycemic index goes up. So you use wheat berries and wheat as an example, right? So wheat berries are like the, the beginning of the wheat and then we process it down into what becomes, you know, bread or something like that. So uh, the processing of the wheat berries into the wheat flour by stone grinding leaves the bran and the middlings and the germs and the oils in the hull all in there and with it, it's nutrients and it's fibers and it's fats. And so obviously like that's complicated for your body to take in and it has a lot of different Different types of things that work together to make the food work for you. Processing by any more modern flour mill is efficient, which is why we like it and have been using it forever, and it's cheaper and it doesn't um, take as long, but it removes all of that good stuff in it and leaves pure starch flour. So that is absorbed quickly um, and it amplifies the glycemic load and the insulin response to that. So even whole wheat and whole grain flours suffer from this issue now. So you're not just talking about white bread, white pasta, we're talking about um, wheat and grain flours. So h wheat highly refined has a high glycemic index while choosing something that's stone milled will not pulverize it as much and it will have a lower glycemic index. So the another example is in, in juice where you can take all the carb fibers out and drink the same amount of fructose and like five oranges in like one cup of juice. So we think juice is really good for us but it's really a whoo lots of insulin um, effect. So um, additionally, carbs are, again, we talked about strings of sugars together, held together by these linkers. If the linkers are hard to break down, then um, it's going to be very simplified here, um, a little slower to digest. And so an example of that is something like beans or legumes, which are high carb, but they're poorly absorbed because they have a really um, tight linker, which is hard, uh, poorly digested. It's an amylopectin C. Um, and that's kind of why we, you know, feel the way we feel and sound the way we sound when we eat beans. Um, so beans are sort of middle of the ground. Other linkers are really easily um, digested and so convert the components to glucose quickly, sort of like the amylopectin A in wheat, um, which makes it break down really fast. And so um, bananas and potatoes are somewhere in the middle. Um, it's, it's not easy, right? It's not as simple as this glycemic index that everyone talks about that is the only thing you have to pay attention attention to when you eat because you can't measure really the whole food in a glycemic index right because it's complicated because you 
have the fiber and the protein associated with that. So what we really should be talking about is the insulin index because it's not really what the glucose does, it's what the insulin does. And if you watched my sugar podcast from last year, last week, um, you'll hear me talk about how fructose um, is confusing in this way because they say it's low glycemic index, but it's because it doesn't work the same way and it really affects your insulin index. So it's the insulin that really is affected um, with our obesity issues these days. So we'll, but we'll save that for our coaching program if you join me. So whole grains are carbs too, right? Long unprocessed chains of sugars that are linked together with their own independent linkers. These have been shown to be protective against obesity and diabetes because they're not refined, they contain all of their stuff, right? The fat, the protein, fiber, linkers for balance and for absorption, but they also contain fiber and the fiber is really key because it's not digestible and it uh, comes in soluble and insoluble forms and fermentable and non-fermentable and your guts use that to kind of break down and, um, uh, into short um, fatty acids that we can use, which is awesome. And they also may decrease the output of the glucose from your liver, which helps um, with uh, metabolism and all sorts of things, energy. So it's about, in summary, balance of what we put into our body. And to maintain this balance, people have to eat whole foods. Um, you want to pay attention to the glycemic index of carbs, but you really want to start doing your own thinking about insulin or join me to learn about this in our three-month program. Um, you really have to think about people have been eating unrefined carbs for ages, but we didn't start getting fat until we started eating all this refined carb stuff. So the refined flours and grains and high uh, glycemic index and insulin index foods are what are going to make your you gain weight. They're gonna, you're going to have a hard time losing weight or maintaining your weight, and it's going to muck up your cholesterol, which is a whole other podcast we can talk about, inflammation in the coronary arteries, and inflammation everywhere else. Um, this is the best thing you can do for yourself is pay attention to this. So as with everything else, it's not black and white. Our bodies are amazingly complicated and join me um, to continue to learn and to feel better emotionally and feel better in your body and make good choices for a great life. So uh, next program, coaching program, three months, daily podcast information, daily tech support. Join us at Holist and me as your personal coach for weekly calls. Um, if you want to feel better, learn more, regardless of what your um, weight uh, goals are. So take care and have a great we uh, we Wellness Wednesday.